Today, magical off-camera flash photography in all kinds of amazing exotic cinematic locations around Disney World? Yes, Disney World! Well, hello there. I'm coming to you again from Walt Disney World, Florida. I'm on the club level at the Contemporary Resort. We have a suite up here. The 14th floor! The 14th floor! I said a better! The club level suites in the Contemporary are really nice, but they cost more than a Sony A7R5 every night. And we have a great view of the Magic Kingdom. Last year, I brought my RX100 Mark 7, which I did again. This year, I'm filming with it right now. Usually, if you're in a vacation spot like this, you want everything to be in focus because you're basically taking landscape shots of buildings and locations, and you want everything to be nice and sharp. But there are some situations where you want to have a blurry background. Like, I want to take some pictures of Kara, and I can't really do flat flash photography very well with the RX100s, and I brought my little AD100 flash. The thing about flashes is when you're in a real high pressure situation where there's a bunch of people around and you can't set up and take your time and do test shots, that's when I use high speed sync. You'd think Micro Four Thirds would be the one to use, but the smallest, most lightweight ones, the G100, the G7, the GM5, they only go up to 1 50th of a second for flash shutter, which brought me back to the 6300. This is still the smallest, most lightweight camera that can do high-speed sync that can do blurry backgrounds that I have. Uh, it's the smallest of the APS-C Sony cameras, the most lightweight, so I'm going to use this for this trip. And uh, I thought I'd get a couple new lenses for it. Normally, people take the trio, you know, the 16, the 30, and the 56, but that's a lot of weight. So I got this. This is a Sigma 18 to 50, 2.8. Look how small that is. That's pretty darn good to have a zoom lens that's this small. And for a couple of shots where I really want a more blurry background, I'm going to use the 23 1.4. This replaces the 16 and the 30. Let's have some fun with the 18 to 50 Sigma with my 6300 in Walt Disney World, Florida. Here we go. I started taking pictures right at the airport. All the shots you're gonna see first are with this little zoom lens, the Sigma 18-50 2.8. This is a great all-purpose lens. Disney sent a mini van to pick us up at the airport. Get it? Mini, mini mouse. For the first couple days, we're gonna use the little 18-50 zoom lens exclusively. For a zoom, it's really sharp, especially a zoom this small, super sharp. Here's the lens at 50 millimeter, 2.8. Notice the nice background. And here it is at 18 millimeter, wide angle. You can get a really nice blurry background if you're doing head and shoulders, but obviously not so much if you're doing a full body shot. But one thing that I really love about this lens is how sharp it is. We were blessed to have VIP hosts take us around and get us past the line so we didn't have to wait to get on the rides. But don't ask what it costs. More than buying a Hasselblad or a Canon C400 every single day. The hosts were wonderful. They helped keep the people away. They helped me with my equipment. Wonderful, wonderful people. And they give you a history of Disney the whole time. Let's look at the video quality from this camera and lens before we get into the photography. Notice how sharp everything is. Really, really nice. The first thing I notice right out of the gate is how awesome the colors are. It's really amazing colors. None of the colors you see in this video have been touched up. I didn't change anything. This is right out of the camera. Great colors, great skin tone. I think this is one of the best Sony cameras ever made for color. I love the colors of the pictures and video. The other Sony APS-C cameras, 6400, 6500, 6600, 6700, they're more for video. The 6300 is more for pictures, but it does really good video quality. The only thing is it can overheat after a while when doing video, so it's best to keep your video clips short. And it has no stabilization whatsoever, so you're going to need a tripod or some kind of stabilization software like Catalyst Browse. But look at the quality, great video. But let's get back to photography here. Again, we're still using the 18-50 to 50 zoom. Even at 2.8, the 6300 can do really nice indoor shots. Colors are awesome. So let's see what we can do with this little lens and this little camera. Yes, this is f2.8. I set white balance to shade when I'm in the shade and sunlight when I'm in the sun. <laughs> it's not rocket science. Simple yet great results. Again, I love the colors on the 6300. Really nice warm colors. Most of the Sony cameras have like this colder bluish tone to them. This one doesn't. This has got the perfect colors. I love it. Look at these shots. I dare say they even look a little cinematic. You don't need super blurry backgrounds to make it look cinematic. Image composition is a big part of it. It's kind of hard to believe these pictures were taken at Disney World, huh? With 60,000 people walking around. <laughs> ah, the magic of photography. 
I love these shots. I love these shots. I love the colors. I love the colors from this camera. And she's great, great model. Man, what would I do if I didn't have a model along all the time? And I'm using my AD100 flash for a lot of these shots. Holding the camera in one hand and my flash in the other hand. Oh, she's a sweetheart. I use my favorite combination of skin smoothing on low and DRO, dynamic range optimizer, usually set to level three or five for a very flattering look where the shadows are not too dark and the image isn't too contrasty. It's very flattering for portraits. And I tried to make it look so you couldn't tell it was in a theme park with 60,000 people. <laughs> I'll tell you, Disney World is a photographer's paradise. If you want some really nice locations, Animal Kingdom, which is in Disney World, has all kinds of great locations like this. This is one of the rare cameras that actually had, has a hot shoe, which you can do high-speed sync, but it also has a pop-up flash. The pop-up flash comes in handy when you don't have an external flash and you need to light up a face. I didn't have my AD100 with me, and they came out pretty good. So these are just with the little built-in flash and the DRO set to five. Pretty nice. The 18-50 to is a great run-and-gun lens. When you don't know if you want to be wide or you want to be zoomed in, great for taking portraits and people. Some really good stuff here. All right, now let's switch over to the other lens, the Sigma 23mm 1.4. You're definitely going to get some blurrier background with this one. This is my replacement for the 16 and the 30 millimeter, all wrapped up in one little 1.4 lens. It takes great close-ups of little tiny things too. Great low light shots. Didn't seem to have any problem with low light, so if you want a low light camera, this is pretty good. Good stuff, good stuff. I love, love, love the colors. This is a great lens to have. I did not miss having the wide angle 16 and I didn't miss having the 30. This really is a great lens to replace both the 16 wide angle and the 31.4. It's like the perfect magic sweet spot. I love it, really nice look. For a lot of these, I wanted to put a little emphasis on her face. So a little bit more light on her face, which is what I use the flash for. But I didn't want it to light up everything. I just wanted a little spot of light on her face. So for that, I used this little rubber snoot. You just pop it on the front and it gives you this little soft edge beam of light that only lights up her face and her upper body. It really adds this magical light on her face. You can see her face is lit up, but you cannot see the edge of the light behind her. For example, we're getting ready to do a shot here. This is just the ambient lighting, but I want to add a little more emphasis to her face. So now we're going to add a little beam of light on her face with a flash. And this is the result. It's subtle, but it draws your attention to her face. And that's what I'm trying to do. Just add a little bit more light to where you want your eyes to go. So these are all taken with the Sigma 23 1.4. I love the angle of this lens. You can do close, medium, and wide shots with one prime lens. So if you only want to have one all-purpose lens and be a prime, this is a good one. And of course, it's nice and sharp. So there you have it. There's our little trip on around Disney World with my APS-C, how old is this thing? It's like eight years old. If you want to blur the background a bit and do some flash photography like I did, I thought I'd mention this. 6300, cheap, small, old camera with a 23 1.4 and an 18 to 50 small lightweight zoom lens, APS-C. Anyway, so there you go. I thought uh, maybe you'd get some fun out of this and inspiration and uh, I'm gonna have some more fun here. Disney World, I'll see you in the next video. Till then, have a good one.